Hi everybody, it's Jessica from Phase 2 Kitchen and I am back with video two for week three of my journey through online culinary school. So in my last video I talked about specific knife cuts like uh, on potatoes like the batonet and um, brunoise and in this video what I want to do is I want to talk about potatoes and go through the cooking assignment that we had. Now, I'm not going to go through the recipe as like a how-to and give you the recipe. If you like the recipe, I will post a link to it on my blog site. Um, but what I want to do is kind of do what we did last week in week two. I want to talk through the recipe, focusing on um, principles of cooking and food science so that you can, you know, if you decide you want to try it or if you want to do anything else with potatoes, you can have a little bit better understanding of the potatoes so that you can kind of think through which kind is best, what process you should use, things like that. So before we start talking about the specific cooking assignment, let's just talk about potatoes. So when potatoes are classified by their starch content, so there's two broad categories of potatoes. There's waxy and starchy. And within each one of these categories, it's not like, like end member, end member. There's a range in each one. But in general, waxy potatoes have high moisture content, high sugar content, low starch content versus starchy potatoes, which have low sugar content, low moisture content, high starch content. So right off the bat from, you know, thinking about food science, you can, you can, in cooking principles, you can say, well, right off the bat, my ingredient depending on which one I choose has a different composition, which means it'll cook differently. Um, and so what I want to talk about is how to think about which one to choose. So if we start with waxy potatoes, so again, high moisture, high sugar, low starch, these potatoes during the cooking process and when you're done cooking them, because of their composition can maintain their shape. So it'll still look like a potato or the piece that you cut when you're done cooking it. So that means that um, they're really great for things like boiling, uh, you know, you can bake them, things like that. Not baked potato, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but in things that you could use it for. So like if you wanted to have um, a soup where you can tell that there are potatoes in it because there's chunks of potatoes that you can see, this would be a great choice. Like for example, a, a, an example of a waxy potato would be like a Yukon Gold. Um, if you wanna have piece, or big chunks of potato on a salad, if you wanna make hash browns, Again, because you're, you're going to have it be really small pieces, but they can cook and, and, and still look like a piece of potato. Um, things like that. Um, boiling, if you were going to make a roast and you wanted to have, you know, nice tender cooked all the way through, but still look like potato, little potatoes with that roast, this would be a great choice. So for those reasons, um, if at the end of the day, if you're approaching a recipe and you want to make sure that your final product has a discernible potato in it, um, especially if you're cutting it, go with the waxier one. Now, a starchy potato, there's kind of two big categories of starchy potatoes. And again, these are low, low moisture, low sugar, high starch. There's russet potatoes, which are also called Idaho potatoes, and things called, and another one called all-purpose or chef's potato, which are white. But just like caveat, you can also have white waxy potatoes. So you just have to pay attention to what you're buying. But in general, because of the composition of starchy potatoes, when they cook, they tend to break down. They're a little drier when they're um, cooked and um, a little bit kind of mealy texture. And so for that reason, they are really, really well suited for French fries. So if you're gonna deep fry, you wanna use a starchy potato because the composition allows them to become nicely uniform and golden and the texture is really good. Versus if you try to deep fry a waxy potato, the high sugar content in something like, you know, maybe a Yukon Gold, that would cause your final French fry product to have black streaks in it because of the sugar and the texture would be off. So starchy potatoes great for frying. Um, also, russet potatoes are probably the best potatoes for baking. Um, and part of the reason for that is because, like I just mentioned, when they break, when they're cooking, they break down, they're drier, so they're a little thirsty, right? So if you're going to, uh, you know, put butter on it or things like that, it'll suck it up really good and it'll get 
to a nice texture when you're eating it. Same thing with the um, chef's potatoes or the all-purpose potatoes. Those are really similar to russets, but just a teeny bit less starch. And they're um, a little bit cheaper too. So they're, you know, they're, they're ideal for, you know, if you're gonna make a puree or a mashed potato or something. And again, if you're gonna add something in the cooking process, like milk, cream, butter, like to make like mashed potatoes or um, uh, the, the recipe we're gonna talk about today, palm puree, they're again, really well suited because they're drier and they'll suck that up and, and they'll wind up getting to a really nice texture. Now, with all that being said, that doesn't mean you can never use a waxy potato for mashed potatoes. I mean, I, I love to use Yukon Gold for mashed potatoes and they work out just fine. It, it, it's not like a hard either or, um, but it's just something to think about when you're cooking. Um, these are their, their tendencies for how to cook. And then if you do do something like use a waxy potato for a french fry and you're like, wow, these black streaks are really ugly. Now you, now you know how to correct it and what to choose in the future. Okay, so enough about potatoes. Let's talk about the recipe that we had to do this week. So palm puree is what we had to make. And this is not the same thing as mashed potatoes. So mashed potatoes, they're usually chunky. They're, they're nice and they're delicious, right? There's nothing wrong with them. I love mashed potatoes. But palm puree is a very, very finely pureed, delicately pureed mashed potato. Um, it doesn't have big chunks in it. Like it's, it's so finely pureed that you could pipe it with a piping bag. And I'll show you that. Um, and it's delicious. It involves cream and butter. Oh my gosh, they're really, really good. Um, and they're just as easy to make as a mashed potato. So um, it's it's just another option that you have. And, and if you go to like, uh, you know, some, some of the fancier restaurants, a lot of times what you're getting, even if they call it mashed potatoes, sometimes is a palm puree. So let's, let me share my screen and we will see if we can find it here. Um, Cause for some reason it never wants to show up. Um, let's find it here. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, so palm puree. <clears throat> These are the ingredients in it. And again, I'll put a link to a recipe on my blog site, but it, you've got um, potato, we're using russet potatoes, because again, we're, we want to use the potatoes that will absorb um, <clears throat> the cream really well. You've got heavy cream, yes, that's why this is really good. Butter, salt, and pepper. I mean, that's it, that's all you need for this. Um, and, you know, ma making sure these things are room temperature really helps. But also, talking uh, about knife skills as a continuation from last week, you want your pieces of potato to be evenly cut. Right, because we talked about last week, if you have uneven pieces of potato, they're gonna cook unevenly. And a critical thing with this recipe is making sure that you don't overcook the potatoes. And this isn't, this isn't just for palm puree, it's also for mashed potatoes. If you overcook your potatoes, they can wind up being like gritty and just having not a great texture. And the best way to check whether your potato is done is while these things are in the water simmering, you use a paring knife, that's the little short knife, and you just poke it in. And it should be able to go into the potato and out of the potato without anything sticking to it. If you stick that paring knife in the potato and it falls apart, they're overcooked. Okay, so that's that. Sorry, my computer is really slow today. Okay, so then, you know, I think we've all probably made potatoes, but just in case, you know, you gotta wash and scrub them. This is what a russet potato looks like. So when I'm talking about starchy, that's a starchy potato. And, um, you know, you wanna make sure, sorry, this is so slow, that you peel them really well and you get all those eyes cut out of there. And let's see, we can skip some of these things because I already showed you that. Okay, so then let, let's just skip down to um, you, you come in and this is the part I was talking about. So here's the potato simmering in the water. This is where you would take your little paring knife and, and stick it in one of these and say, is it when, it, when I put the knife in, is the knife sticking? If it's sticking, they're not done. If the knife slides in and out, they're done. If the knife slides in and they fall apart, they're overdone. So another step to think about when you're um, making mashed potatoes or palm puree 
is this step called steam drying. So after you take the potatoes out of the water and you have them in this colander, you want to just let them sit for a minute because when they sit for a minute, they're still hot, there's steam coming off of them, and it helps dry out a little bit of that moisture so that your end product doesn't, isn't too wet. Um, but like another example, if you look at these potatoes, see how I've, I've put them in a colander, I mean, like dumped them out, the water's come out, but see how they all still look like cubes? That is what you're trying to go for, um, and that's a sign of being cooked and not overcooked. If you dump them in here and they start falling apart, they're overcooked. Um, and the way, and, and this is really a step that, that we're, you know, you can go probably one, one way make mashed potatoes and one way make this pond puree. If you have a, either a mesh, like the strainer I just had, or a mesh strainer, or I have a food mill, which makes life a lot easier. It's pushing those, cooked potatoes, this is why they need to be cooked, through the food mill that gives you this kind of fine texture. And if you pushed it through a strainer, just had a strainer and a spoon and, or a spatula and one like this, you'll get the same kind of thing. Um, and this is the point where, just to bring it back to what I was talking about earlier, it, they're all broken up, it's a starchy potato, it's dry, it wants to drink something, and when you add that cream and that butter, mwah, it goes right? And then you stir it and it all incorporates and becomes beautiful. And at this point, I'm going to show you this picture, which I love because it was so much fun. This is where you can take it from, you know, I'm just going to take a spoon and throw it on rustic style to like fancy, like, and all you need is a piping bag. I mean, this is the piping bag that I use like to do um, cupcakes and stuff with. I mean, it's not like fancy or different because it's a savory item, but check this out. Okay. This is really exciting. So boom, look at that. Isn't that awesome? That is, and there's really no scale on here. Like it's, it's probably about that big around. But, but I'll tell you what, that, that looks awesome. And see how you can see, you can see there's no big chunks in here. There's just a little bit of salt and pepper that you can see, but it's really delicate and fine. And it tastes amazing. And here's just an example of the way that you can serve this. Um, I went with lamb chops because I'm telling you, you may not even think you're a lamb fan, but lamb with rosemary with some potatoes. Oh my goodness. It's a delicious dinner with red wine, of course, <laughs> but this was a, a different way that I piped it. So with all that being said, let me turn this back around. That's palm puree. And so we kind of think, think of <laughs> talked about it from a food science perspective, right? But the overall cooking method is um, uh, a, a moisture heat, right? Because you're using the water, you're, bo you're boiling the water and then simmering it. So you're transferring heat into that product, into the, the potato product via the water. Um, so there you go. So now you have another option for if you want to serve something and make it a little fancier, you can go the palm puree route. So that wraps up week three. I'm getting ready to head into week four. Um, this is grains, legumes, beans, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm excited. I'll be back next week with some more videos. Um, if you have any questions, jessica at phase2kitchen.com or feel free to send me a comment or anything either through Instagram at phase2kitchen or on my blog site. Have a good one.